here's a graphical view of the various wait times and how they add up. So here's a scheduler, and we have a thread SPID60 that's running on the processor. At some point, it's going to hit a point in the code where it needs a resource, and it's going to have to wait for that resource. So its state changes from running to suspended. It goes onto the waiter list. Now we are accruing resource wait time. All the time that we're sitting on the waiter list, we're accruing that time. Eventually, it's going to be told that its resource is available. The thread state will change from suspended to runnable, and it will move to the runnable queue. So the resource wait time is the time spent between leaving the processor and entering the runnable queue. The thread is going to make its way to the top of the runnable queue, and all the time that it's on the runnable queue, it's accumulating signal wait time. Eventually, when it reaches the top, its state changes to running, it moves back to the CPU. The time that it's spent waiting after it's been told that its resource is available, but before getting back on the processor, is known as the signal wait time. The overall wait time, from being on the processor, transiting through the waiter list and the runnable queue and back to the processor, is the sum of the resource wait time and the signal wait time. The first DMV to talk about is sys.dmos waiting tasks. This DMV is going to give us information about every single thread on the server that is currently suspended. So all threads, no matter what schedule they're on, if they're on the waiter list, they're going to have the state suspended and they're going to show up as the output of this DMV. You can think of this as showing us what's happening right now for a server. And so if you walk up to a server and it's experiencing performance problems, this is the DMV that you're going to use first. A lot of information is given back by this DMV, including the session ID and execution context ID of each thread, so which SPID the thread is part of, and whether it's part of a parallel operation. What the actual resources that's being waited for, in other words, what's the wait type of each thread. For some of the wait types, it's also going to give us more description about what the resource is that's being waited for. So for instance, if it's an LCK underscore M underscore something wait type, so one of the locking wait types, it's going to tell us what level the lock is at, page or record or table, for instance, and the resource, in other words, which page and which table. It's going to tell us how long each thread has actually been waiting for so far. And if the thread is blocked by another thread, so if it's waiting for a lock, for instance, it's going to give us the spit of the blocking thread. And that's going to be really useful because we can follow the chain of blocking threads and see what's at the head of the blocking chain, what's causing the problem in the first place. And this can show us some really interesting things. It could be that we've got a whole bunch of threads that are blocked, waiting for locks, but the head of the blocking chain is actually waiting for an I.O. to complete, for instance. And it's not actual locking that's causing the root cause. It's an I.O. problem for some reason. So as I mentioned, this is probably the first DMV that you're going to run when you walk up to a slow server, because it's going to show us what's happening right now, what threads are waiting and what are they waiting for. Now, as with many DMVs, just looking at the output of this DMV isn't incredibly useful until you start joining it with other DMVs. So commonly, this DMV is joined up with some of the sys.dm exec, for instance, exec requests and query plans and so on, to be able to say, well, I've got this thread that's suspended waiting for this type. Let's get the graphical query plan and see what this thread is actually doing. And I'm going to show you this in a demo. In this demo, I want to show you how to use the sys.dmos waiting tasks DMV to have a look and see what threads there are that are actually waiting. So this is another demo where I'm going to be using a, a workload. And in this case, the add 50 clients is going to call workload client.sql. So we'll have a look at that in a second. The instructions, though, say that we copy everything to the plural site directory, which I've done, and then run examine waiting tasks.sql. So my, my workload, this is just going to connect up to the server and it's going to sit in a loop doing inserts. So I'm going to have 50 connections doing that when I'm, I'm doing my, uh, my workload. So examine waiting tasks.sql. First of all, let's just try running DMOS waiting tasks. And we have a whole bunch of stuff sitting there because it's showing us all of the background tasks as well. Now, the background tasks aren't really part of our workload, so I'm going to want to filter those out a little bit. But let's have a look at running our workload first of all. Going back over here, we set up our workload, and that's just like in the uh, the last demo in uh, the previous module. It's going to create a database called Hotspot, and it's going to create a table with an int identity column and a clustered index. So I'll go ahead and run this script, and that creates all of that. And then we add our 50 clients. 
like so. Now we have 50 connections to that database, all of them inserting records. So now if I look at DMOS waiting tasks, I see there's a whole bunch of things like this in here. And these are from the connections that I have to the server. Now what I'd really like to do is filter out all of the background tasks and only look at the stuff that I'm running. So I can do that. What I'm going to do is I've got some code here. And what this does is it takes DMOS waiting tasks and actually joins it up with some of the exec DMVs as well, like exec sessions and exec requests, so that I can get plan handles and SQL text handles, which I can then pass into exec SQL text and exec query plan. And what I'm also doing to get rid of all of the system background tasks is I'm filtering on is user process equals one. In earlier versions, you used to be able to filter on SPID number being over a certain number, but you can't do that anymore, over, over 50. You can't do that anymore. And the way to filter is to do is user process equals one. So this is a lot better to run than just looking at the raw DMV. So, and I've also ordered by session ID. So what we've got here is all the sessions that are connected to SQL Server, these are their SPIDs, and the, the thread IDs. So all of these sessions only have one thread each. There's no parallelism going on here. Once we get to later demos, we'll see some examples of parallelism where each connection has way more than one thread. How long the thread has been waiting, what it's waiting for. So these are threads that are sitting on the waiter list on their CPUs, uh, sorry, on their schedulers, waiting for a particular wait type. And we're going to get to talking about wait types in module five. If the wait type was to do with locking, then there will be a blocking session ID, and we'll be able to use that to trace to the head of the blocking chain to see what that thread is waiting for. Some wait types have a resource description, for instance, for instance, locks and page latches have a resource description so you can identify what it is that the, the thread is actually waiting for. What the program is that's running my connection, the SQL text of what's going on, database ID if relevant, and a graphical query plan. So I can click that and I can see what's going on with any particular query. So if you walk up to a server and you're interested to know what's going on, remember that the DMOS waiting tasks DMV is what's happening right now. So you can click on that, you can see some things that are waiting potentially, and using the script that I've got there for you, you can actually have a look and see what the query plans are. And that's gonna be one of the things that you might end up looking at, depending on the wait type, to try and figure out what's going on, what the root cause of the problems are. So let's go do some cleanup. I stop my test. And I go back over here. And I get rid of that database that I had. So an extremely useful DMV to use. And one of the first things that, that I always do when I walk up to a server is to just go and see what's going on using that script and DMOS waiting tasks.